Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this is one I was debating doing, but I think it would be worth sharing for the sake of everybody that owns dogs. We hate to see our pets be sick. Well, I follow a vet online. His name is Dr. Jones. And I got, uh, I get letters from him. And um, we did try his um, um, supplement, the one that's got like a whole bunch of stuff that's really good for aging dogs with the glucosamine and the chondroitin. And it had, his has colostrum in it, which is supposed to, uh, I forget now, but I mean, vitamin C and it had, had a lot of good stuff in it. It was kind of pricey, but we tried it. Now, Buddy started turning in his nose up to his food, so I, but he's a picky dog. He wants to change in his diet every, about every month. So, you know, I, I'm not saying it's not a good product because it's made with chicken, chicken turned into powder or something. So anyway, it's chicken flavored. Well, anyway, enough of that. This is not a commercial for his product. I was just saying uh, it's, it's a good product as far as what's in it. This is, a, okay, he says, Hello, Gene. Welcome to Friday. This is a disturbing story, further reinforcing the need to be aware of what you are putting into your dog or cat and who you can trust. I, unfortunately, can't give you all the answers, but I can give you some guidance as to how to choose quality pet food. Listen to this. If you don't know this already, it's disgusting. Along with my manual of home remedies for dogs and cats, which is a... a Veteran, Veterinary Secrets Revealed, 2nd Edition. It's a 519-page comprehensive pet health manual, and you can just download it. Um, I'll try to figure out a way to... I don't know if I click on this. I guess if I clicked on this, it would take me there. I put, put this link in the description box if y'all would like to download a 519 page comprehensive pet health manual in ebook digital format on how to heal your dog or cat at home includes detailed instructions on how to diagnose your pet at home perform the main healing modalities you will need and covers 93 diseases and illnesses with a description of each disease and multiple remedies you can try with your own dog or cat. It's, you can use it with the iOS, Kindle, and PDF for PC or laptop formats. All are included. Okay. So he started with that. And you see pictures of kibbles and bits. Oh, Roy. Which I figured, you know, that I think that's Walmart's brand. Gravy Train, which I figured was a bad one. I would not ever buy it for Buddy because it's full of grain and it's cheap. And I just knew it would be full of bad byproducts. And then they have a picture here of Skippy. I've never heard of Skippy. Alright, here's the actual bad, bar bad article. FDA says euthanil a problem in pet food source petfoodindustry.com author Tim Wall the director of the Center for Veterinary Medicine in the US Food and Drug Administration noted new evidence that the problem may be more pervasive than originally thought the resurgence of recalls and dog illnesses related to pentobarbital contamination of pet foods startled Stephen Solomon, DVM, now in his second year as director of the Center for Veterinary Medicine in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 
the cycle of pentobarbital related recalls needs to be halted with preventative preventive controls he said but noted new evidence suggests that the problem may be more pervasive than originally thought excuse me a second all right I was surprised earlier this year when pentobarbital came back as an issue and came back in full force, he said, during the Feed and Pet Food Joint Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. Pentobarbital simply should not be found in pet food. The American public, especially pet owners, demand this of us as regulators. They deserve to know the comforting fact that their animal's food does not contain a substance that is intentionally used to euthanize animals. Now I'm sure that by the time they take these dead animals and grind them up into dog food, this medicine, though it may show up in your dog and make it sick in some way, is not going to euthanize it because it's not fresh and the, and the amount of it. But you're eating it, if you're eating it in your dog food and they're putting in a little tiny bit every day, I don't know if it can add up. Drugs get out of your system through your kidneys, all kind of ways. But really, do we really want to feed our pets food that has dead animals ground up in them i mean yeah we they grind up chickens and beef and pork and whatever duck okay let me move on on march 2nd the fda upgraded jm smuckers withdrawal i didn't even know smuckers made dog food a withdrawal of pet food products to a recall affecting kibbles and bits, which Buddy ate for about two years, but it's been a while. Like when he was younger, he liked that better than the more expensive brands. Old Roy and Skippy, okay, it says affecting kibbles and bits, Old Roy and Skippy brands. The FDA based this decision on a test confirming the presence of pentobarbital in the tallow ingredient used in the affected products. Pentobarbital as widespread pet food ingredient supply problem. I think they left a word out there. Pentobarbital as widespread pet food ingredient supply problem. The problem of pentobarbital entering the companion animal food stream may be more widespread than initially presumed, he said although the FDA investigation has not concluded. Most of us probably think that pentobarbital contamination comes from a few bad actors, he said. New evidence is showing it may be a much more pervasive problem in the animal food supply than originally thought. Although Solomon said he believes that rendered products may be a source of pentobarbital in pet food ingredients. He also recognized that rendered products are valuable to the pet food industry and reduce strains on the environment. Yeah, let's just take all these animals that we have to put to sleep and sell them to the pet food industry. FDA acts on pentobarbital in pet food. 
there's a 14 to 15 year time frame between the last pentobarbital recalls and the start of the most recent recalls. He said, this kind of tells a story that some of these issues reoccur and we need to be diligent as to what hazards can reoccur. FDA officials are currently working to address the problem of pentobarbital in pet food, Solomon said. The current draft of hazard analysis and risk prevention controls for food for animals. This, okay, this is a quote. The current draft of, quote, hazard analysis and risk prevention controls for food for animals, unquote, guidance document, GFI number 245, now contains advice on dealing with the issue of pento barbital. The framework of the Food Safety Modernization Act, or FSMA, allows the FDA to establish means to monitor for pentobarbital in the pet food supply. In the pet food supply chain, he said, old policies need to be updated to incorporate FSMA hazard analysis and preventative control controls frameworks. Federal officials are willing to work with pet food makers to implement preventative, preventive control for animal feed regulations through education, guidance, meetings, and discussion to help control pentobarbital and pet food, he said. We're well aware that some of you have already taken steps to address this hazard, and we appreciate that, Solomon said. He ends it with, uh, we could put a picture in and let our animal be pet of the week. Heal your pet at home. Best wishes, Dr. Andrew Jones, DVM. He does have a YouTube channel named Veterinary Secrets that I'm subscribed to. He goes on to say, P.S. This means that some of the pet food contains dead, dying, diseased, decayed animals, some of which have been euthanized. Unreal, he says. Another reason to make more of your own pet food at home. This resource can help. And this is the book I told you about at first. All right. So I'm going to click on this link here and see where it takes me. He's got a disclaimer. This information is for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace the advice of your own veterinary veterinarian. Dr. Jones resigned from the College of Veterinarians of BC. Must be British Columbia. I think he's in Canada. Effective December 1st, 2010, meaning he cannot answer specific questions about your pet's medical issues or make specific medical recommendations for your pet. Now, isn't that just stupid? He's a veterinarian, but he wants to do a holistic treating, teach people how to Treat your pet at home. And so I bet he had to resign. Or got in trouble for doing holistic stuff in a practice. I don't know. It doesn't say he may have resigned on his own. Just like many doctors and nurses are doing in the medical field. They're fed up and disgusted 
with the vaccinating they have to do and have to be vaccinated and doctors that have a conscience and realize it's all a money game and an insurance controlling thing and they neurologist I had one time teaches geology at Jacksonville State University now a neurologist he just quit anyway I'm clicking on oh there it goes it's going there alright so I'll be able to click this link it takes you to his site you can check him out and see if you would like audiobook is $47 but wait a minute it may be $47 I've downloaded a lot of books free because I joined I'm like a member you could say uh, I haven't I'm not paying the monthly fee people that pay the monthly fee get to ask him direct questions in email and get answers uh, suggestions you know what I mean anyway I don't pay the money so but when I have gone to a webinar or signed up for it and I've tried to make them you know watch him but you can watch him his videos on DVD on YouTube Okay, so I'm going to end this here. This is for the doggy people. And I hope that it was helpful and that you realize that if you just give your dog commercial dog food, you don't know what you're giving your dog. And it could be in the wet food as well. You don't know what all's in there. My dog won't eat wet food at all. That's why I make it. He also has a recipe book on how to make your own dog food. He made one in a, a YouTube video once using stew beef, beef stew meat. I just, I can't afford that, but I get ground turkey. And I use three pounds of ground turkey. I put it in the crock pot. I let it brown. When I start smelling it, I know, okay, it's time to add the rest. I have to break up the meat and stir it up unless I get up a couple times and keep it stirred up. But anyway, after that meat is brown, I add just a little salt over it, not much. And I put in three cups of water and some bouillon cubes for flavor. And you want the low sodium, uh, that or low sodium broth is better. And um, chicken broth, uh, I've used that many times. Okay, then I add the frozen peas and carrots. But this time I shopped, I went, I went ahead and shopped Aldi because I didn't have enough to get it all. If I use Publix, it always comes to more, the same exact stuff. So I only could get a bag of frozen peas and I had to buy fresh carrots so I'll have to cut those carrots up and put them I may have to microwave them for just a couple minutes you know how carrots are so hard but they but it cooks all you know four or five hours because I want all the flavorings to get in there and the, uh, the meat's not got a lot of grease in it because it's lean ground turkey it does produce a little fat and a little water comes out of it. But then I add the three cups of water and the flavoring. The peas and the carrots. And when that gets to kind of bubbling, I crack in 12 eggs and stir them. Make sure the yolks are all broken up. I mean, it doesn't hurt if, if a whole yolk ends up cooking in there you can cut it up later and then I let it simmer I used to put rice but I quit using rice because I've got them on more mostly protein and a few carbs for his weight control okay so that's what I do and I I hope that helps somebody and oh when the top looks like custard 
that's when the eggs, you know your eggs are fully cooked. I cook the meat, brown the meat on high, add all the ingredients, turn it down to medium, put in, when I put in those eggs, I turn it down to low and leave it a few hours. And when it looks like custard, I pull the plug and let it just cool and stir, stir all that cooked egg into the meat mixture. So anyway, that's that's his wet food, and that lasts him a whole month. And it's less than what I was paying for for um, various kinds of canned wet food to add to the kibble, the dry food, which he does like some of, but he wants that wet food on top of it mixed. He doesn't like plain dry food for supper. He's picky. What can I say? I, I've let him put it down there for him to eat in uh, three days in a row. He didn't eat a thing. And we used to sleep together in a double bed. And I'd hear his stomach growling. I said, that's it. I'm making, I'm making him, well, I'm getting him some wet food. So I'm not letting my dog starve just because people say, oh, you just let that dog eat dry food. Well, Dr. Jones says you need to stop giving him dry food if you can, at least not near as much, and give him mostly homemade food. And that's better for him. Okay, I'm going to end this now, and I hope, I hope I, I helped somebody keep their dog healthy. All right. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.